Now, when I first started to learn how to TIG weld, I had a common problem of not knowing how far away from my workpiece I was. I was getting lost and losing lines of my layout as I was welding. And then inevitably, as I'm welding along, dip. So today, let's go over where you should be looking and what to focus on so we can get you set up with some steady passes that look great. So somebody was messaging me on Instagram asking, where am I supposed to look while I'm welding? What should I focus on? Please help. After understanding what the problem was a little more, they were having problems with dipping and another really annoying problem that this person was dealing with and that was having problems getting the filler material into the puddle perfectly. So check this out. When most people are welding, what they are focused on is not dipping. When they start to weld, they lock on and give the tungsten a death stare. They're trying so hard to do everything they can to keep that poor tungsten out of the puddle. And then inevitably, blam, bleh, yuck. Even after all that focus to make sure it didn't happen, it still happened, hey? Now anybody out there watching right now, do you mountain bike? When you're just getting going, learning how to ride trails, what do they teach you when you're trying to split the gap in between two trees? Do not focus on the trees. You wanna look and you wanna focus on exactly where you want to go. This is the exact same thing with what we're doing here. The more that you focus and try super hard to keep that tungsten out of the puddle. Yep, it's gonna draw it in just like a magnet. No. It's like staring right at the tree as you're trying to avoid it. So here is what I teach my students in my online TIG welding program. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus our eyes and we're gonna look here instead. See right at the leading edge of the puddle right here? You wanna focus your eyes right here. It gives you something solid to watch so it'll give you an easier time of keeping your hands steady. It won't be moving around or wobbling around at all so it'll give you something a little more sturdy to focus on mentally. It helps a lot to focus on this spot here. It'll also give you a bit more of a peripheral view to focus on around the welding area. So you might actually find that you can follow the layout or the joint much easier as you are welding. In my online TIG welding program, some of the first exercises, we are carefully following a strategic layout with our welding. So learning out this trick to stay on track helps people out a ton when they are learning. Now, what else did we mention? We talked about filler material real quick. We can see here that the filler material is going into the puddle super cleanly, no problems here at all. You're gonna to wanna to feed to this spot right here. It is halfway from the leading edge of the puddle to the center of the puddle. Don't feed your filler material to this spot here. This is gonna cause you to pull your standoff distance back or arc length, whatever you wanna call it. And if you're welding stainless steel, you do not wanna to feed to this spot of the puddle here. This is gonna cause your rod to get stuck. This happens all the time with stainless, it's super annoying. Feed the filler material here instead. The filler material will break off cleaner into the weld pool and it'll go in with zero problems guaranteed. Check this episode out next. This episode is gonna help you to find out how to get the best results with whatever setup you are using, doesn't matter. You don't even need super nice gear. This one will get you going with some great looking welds. Watch that episode next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.